Hello and welcome to my Dungeon Saga Dwarf King's Hold Dead Rising review preview thing. Uh, Mantic uh, are famous for producing lots of nice cheap minis and a couple of nice board games. Uh, this one, Dwarf King's Hold Dead Rising, it was pretty good. Good enough that I uh, bought the expansion. And that was pretty good, good enough that I actually bought the follow-up to it. And uh, I only got that as a PDF. It came with uh, the Mantic Kings of War minis, which you have to cut off sprues, glue, file, and do all that sort of wargamery goodness. And it gave me a nice taste for the various figures in their product range. And uh, I, I think, uh, you know, they did a pretty good job. Now, some people have compared them to uh, probably the main competitor, GW, who produced some of the best figures on the planet. However, you pay a lot of money. Uh, I think this figure here uh, is at well over £8 here in the UK. Well, for the same amount of money, you could probably get about 10 to 20 of these guys. So, um, you know, these are pretty good. And for wargaming pieces, particularly for mass battles, where you have a whole little regiment lined up, there's plenty. Now the Kickstarter is for a new version of Dwarf King's Hold called Dungeon Saga. Uh, these are the original tiles, which uh, unfortunately are quite thin. Uh, the new game, I think, is going to be at least twice as thick, so much better. Uh, about the same thickness as Descent, by the sound of it. It might have similar artwork, uh, but the tiles are going to be a little bit bigger. And uh, the bone piles, you can actually upgrade with resin upgrades. And the figures, rather than being these assemble it yourself, hard plastic, uh, fiddly figures, which a lot of board gamers are not going to be keen on, are going to be a sort of PVC soft plastic. Um, they'll be one piece or pre-assembled, so you should be able to just open the box and play. Of course you can choose to paint them. Uh, I've started painting my Mantic Undead, so as you can see they paint up quite nicely. Uh, this guy's pretty much finished. I, I do need to do a couple of extra bits, including basin. This guy's a little bit further along. He's got some little grass and some kind of extra finishing on his base just to make it uh, more or less done. And over there I've got a whole load of bits and pieces uh, already painted up and assembled. And I've got a, a box to supplement them. So I'm, I'm sorted for figures really. But what's drawn me into Dun Dungeon Saga is it's hopefully going to be a dungeon crawler. And there's not many in the kind of old school dungeon crawl around. Now the purpose of uh, this scenario, which is in the alpha test rules, is to get your four heroes through the hordes of the necromancers, the doors represented by these tiles here, all the way through to this escape door here. And this uh, necromancer here is playing the part of a undead dwarf uh, in the opening scenario. The Necromancer has some cards that they can play, uh, one a turn, and the heroes, uh, they're over here, they're all statted up with individual moves, individual dice, armour, special feats, uh, various actions they can do, and uh, spells and potions. And that's what makes this different from its predecessors, the Dwarf King Holds game. Uh, it basically allows you to actually have four heroes walk through the dungeon and level up. And there's lots of really cool extras. Uh, they're basically going to do Dead Rising and Green Menace. That's pretty much locked in now. They're going to do some 3D furniture, which I've been bleating on about ever since the Kickstarter got going. Um, they're chucking in a load of free minis. Uh, the value has gone up. Uh, when I pledged originally, it was £100 for... Oh, sorry, $100 for nothing really special. However, it's starting to get to feel a bit more like your typical Mantic Kickstarter where you get quite a lot of extras. Well, how does the game work? Well, it's very simple. You nominate a hero and move them. Now, there are some cards the Necromancer has that will interfere, uh, but don't have them. So I'm going to start off with the Dwarf. So he's going to move one, two, three, four, and then he's going to rotate five. So he can now attack these two figures. So it's a good idea to take down my Wraith, which is playing the part of an armoured zombie for today, and uh, the Ghoul is playing the part of a uh, regular zombie. So, an armoured zombie. They're a bit harder to kill, but they only get two dice, so let's roll my two dice. Got a five and a two. I get five dice as the dwarf, so I roll those. Now, what you do is you compare your highest dice to the highest dice. So six beats five, so the zombies not block that. 
my next dice was also a six, so that beats the two, then a five, then a five, then a one. And we then compare these dice versus the armor value of the zombie. Now an armor on a uh, armored zombie is three, so the one fails to hit. So that means I've actually done four hits, which is enough to kill this guy here, and he's gone. So that's it, that's pretty much the game, it's pretty simple. And that's the whole point. Now the advanced rules I'm hoping are going to add a lot more heroic stuff and extra features and traps and all that good stuff. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with them. So uh, let's get on to our second move, which is going to be our barbarian here. So one, two, three, four, and he can't move diagonally five there because, strictly speaking, he could get hit as he comes through this gap. So he's going to go here. He's going to rotate to face that direction. So he can actually hit this guy because he's in his front arc. Uh, I should actually cover that here. Let's take this skeleton here and put him facing us. Now because he's facing us, he can hit the square to his side, here, here, here and here, but not these three squares behind him. So it's very important when you move that you position yourself. Now you can kind of rotate on the spot, uh, but if I was to move him away there, because he's passed through this square here where this guy can attack, he would be attacked. So I'm going to stop him there. He only rolls four dice, so let's roll the four dice for my hero here. And then let's roll two for my regular zombie. So I rolled a four, a four, a three, and a one. Now this time, the fours equal, so they get cleared away. So I've now got two dice potentially hitting my zombie. Now zombies hit on a one, so both of these hit. So that's two hits, zombie's dead. Well, sadly not. Zombies require three hits to be killed, so that didn't work out so well. So because that didn't work out so well, uh, let's move one, two, three, four. Let's shoot some arrows into that regular zombie. So let's roll four dice. Oh, that's quite a good roll. And the four is beaten by six, so it's gone. The three is beaten by six. That's four hits. Should have attacked the armoured zombie. Uh, gone. So he's off, never to return. The wizard... It's going to move up to be um, adjacent to here, and I should have a range ruler. Um, one, two, three, four, yeah, that should be in range. Uh, there are actually, I think, a four and a half inch and a seven and a half inch, I can't remember just off the top of my head, range ruler, and I could check the line of sight with it and everything. Trust me, he's in. So I'm going to use my spell, so that's going to exhaust my spell for this turn. So that's uh, five dice, yep, yeah, five dice. And then the armoured zombie is going to roll his uh, two dice. Uh, four cancels the four. Four beats the three. So I've actually done a four, a two, a two, and a one hit. But the armour of the armoured zombie is three. So I've only actually done him one damage, which is not enough to, to wound him. So that's it. That's my hero's turn. So because I'm a horrible, nasty necromancer, I'm going to raise two skeletons. So I'm actually going to take these two bone piles here. They're gone, replaced by two skeletons. Now I need to pick on these guys. They foolishly separated from these guys over here. So one, two, three. So this guy here can attack the elf. And this guy, one, two, three. And this skeleton here can attack the wizard. So let's do the wizard from the skeleton. So two dice. A five and a two, and then my wizard rolls two dice, a five and a two. That's nicely blocked. Now the other skeleton against the elf gets two twos and three dice. Oops, three dice for my elf. Well, he blocks. So th those skeletons did a pretty poor job. So that's two units activated. I'm now going to activate this guy. He's going to come in and he's going to bash the elf. So that's three guys activated, and you've only got four activations as the Necromancer. So that's an Armoured Zombie, so that's two dice. Don't know why I'm trying to roll three. Uh, three dice for the Elf. Ah, well it's not three dice for an Elf, because he's outnumbered. If you look, I've actually got two guys on one, so that's going to be two dice, in fact, for the Elf, because you lose a dice for being outnumbered. He successfully blocks, and then finally, down the bottom here, you got a regular zombie versus our barbarian, I think, because he's going to have a hard time beating the uh, beating the dwarf with his five dice. So uh, my six beats the five, so uh, that red dice is no good. My four, however, beats the two. Well, unfortunately, six is more than the armor of the barbarian, which is two, so that's a wound. 
And if you get four wounds on your hero, you're in big trouble. Uh, I have to double check in the rules whether it's four or five wounds to actually incapacitate them. If I incapacitate your hero, you're gone. Now in addition, because this guy's wounded, he's going to lose a dice, and that's bad news. Well, this scenario is all about getting through the door, so I'm going to get the dwarf to bash this zombie here, and there you go, 5-5, five, five. that beats the 2 and the 3, and then 3 ones, that's enough to kill this zombie. So that's now freed up my barbarian, who's going to run forward, position himself here, he's going to roll 3 dice against the door, and I'm going to roll 3 dice for the door, kind of resisting being attacked, so to speak. And as you can see up here, six beats of five, five beats of four, three beats of two. That's three hits. The door is gone and we're now free. So these guys need to get out of here. So I'm going to activate the feet of this elf. And that basically allows him to roll three shots. So that's four dice against every uh, target up to three in total. So... Let's do the skeleton first, and five, three, three, so that's gone. Yeah, that's enough, skeleton's dead, so skeleton's gone. The next attack, so second attack against the other skeleton, roll for that. Yeah, he's gone. Now, when it comes to killing skeletons, uh, if you do three attacks on one of these guys, they get reduced to dust and they're dead. If you do two hits against these guys, they get turned back into one of these, so they can come back. If you do one hit, well, they're so bony and empty that effectively you've hit nothing particularly important. Uh, let's do the final and in crucial role, which is killing the Wraith, who is, of course, our armoured zombie. Uh, did I roll too many dice there? No, I didn't. So uh, a six cancels that. The one gets nothing. And the armoured... Nope. Unfortunately... This poor elf is trapped in combat with the armoured zombie, but my wizard is free. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and they're into the room, ready to try and escape here. Unfortunately, that now makes them vulnerable to being attacked by the dwarf. Now one thing I should have done is drawn a new card at the end of the necromancer's turn. Uh, so we just quickly pretend I did that. They are going to be able to activate an extra model. Now they can normally only activate four so by playing this card, they could activate five. And as I only have one, two guys, that card's not going to be any good. So in the Necromancer's turn, I'm going to want to raise a skeleton. Probably this one here. So we take this one away from there. And then we've got a skeleton that can come in and attack the wizard and hopefully tie up the wizard. We're going to move up the dwarf, Revenant. And so now you can see it's a race to get from there through to here without taking too many wounds. Now what happens, let's say... If the Barbarian gets picked on, he's already wounded. Um, if the Necromancer keeps wailing on him, well, I'm going to need to drink a healing potion. And you've only got two of them, so you've got to be careful. Anyway, that's a very quick, very rough and ready video of the game. Just give you a kind of feel for it. Uh, now, Beast of War have done a very good little introductory video. And I believe they've got a second one in the works, let's hope so. Uh, and I believe there are some other gamers who are trying out the kickstarter rules which are very raw right now um, but you can see the heritage from dwarf king's hold so i got a feeling if you really really like dwarf king's hold you're probably gonna like dungeon saga if you hated dwarf king's hold i'm not sure there's enough different here for you to like it but there might it might be worth giving it a go because there are some new rule tweaks in here uh, if you're someone who thought it was quite a good game but it wasn't quite dungeony enough well maybe you should try it out and uh, as i say um there is an expansion, so I think this is 25 bucks uh, to get this um, kind of added into your dungeon saga. Uh, however, you can actually buy, as I say, the original Green Menace from Mantic if you like the idea of getting hold of some of their natty little orcs. And uh, they're particularly nice elves. I, I really like these, as I say. Um, some people don't, but I think they're, they're great. Um, the people holding shields while firing a bow, they're a bit off, but... The spear units and the dragon lord are, are really lovely. I do actually have the dragon lord. I haven't painted it. Uh, let's just give you a quick look at some of my other Mantic stuff. Um, the really nice two-player undead versus orc box set. 
Then you've got my skeletons, which as you can see are being painted. Uh, the lovely vampire Pegasus, some revenants, and uh, just a few wraiths. And inside this little box here, which you, you're not going to see inside, are um, my elves, uh, my dwarves, and I think my orcs. And then in this nice big box underneath, Dead Zone, which is also by Jake, who uh, invented Dwarf King's Hold. Well, there you go. I think that's uh, will do for now. As I say, given you a rough idea, hopefully uh, enough to go check out the Kickstarter. It's 100 bucks for the base game. Uh, it's getting more and more added to it, and the more backers there are and the more funds there are, the more free stuff we're going to get, the more stretch goals are going to get unlocked for extras. Uh, we've already unlocked the first expansion, which is a remake of Green Menace. So all we're waiting for now is uh, whatever else uh, Mantic have got up their sleeves. They've even got some nice 3D furniture, which I think looks really good. And uh, this stuff is actually Hearst Arts, uh, just cheap plaster of Paris stuff. Um, to give you an idea of what it might look like with 3D furniture. I think visually it looks great. It can act as line of sight blocking. Um, and it just gives you things to interact with. I mean, this is a dungeon crawler, so you know this chest, maybe it's uh, got an item in it. Maybe this uh, barrel here is actually a trap. Um, all sorts of great potential by just adding this. Uh, Hero Quest had 3D stuff, a little bit pointless, but it just added to the coolness. And bear in mind, this is a game designed to capture that Hero Quest vibe where it's simple enough to teach your kids, easy enough to play, but it's got a little bit of depth to have fun, visually very appealing, which will appeal to young boys in particular, I reckon. And I think it's a great product and really deserves your support. Uh, the gameplay is pretty good as well. So, um, as you can tell, just from the alpha rules, uh, there's not a huge amount there just now, but there's enough there to, to be interesting, and I just know from looking at what uh, Jake's done with Dwarf King's Hold and Dead Zone and the other games he's developed, that this should be something pretty special. And the advanced rules, uh, sometimes referred to as the Book of Depravity, looks absolutely amazing. Uh, we haven't seen enough of it yet, but from the discussions on Jake's blog, the talks that Ronnie's given to various uh, websites and uh, clubs. Uh, I think this game's going to be really great and I'm really looking forward to uh, actually getting my hands on it. Unfortunately, there is a bit of a wait, but um, hopefully, if enough of us back, they'll be able to get it out to the market a lot quicker than their currently expected shipping date. Anyway, if you like what you see, go check out the Kickstarter.